Good evening, everyone. My name is Jelana Lewis, and I'm the consultation facilitator for the Africa Bill Community Consultation, which is part of the Windsor Street Exchange Redevelopment Project. Thank you for joining our public virtual meeting. Uh, this public meeting is part of the Africville Community Consultation and will collect your feedback to help identify potential community benefits for the Africville community to be included in the Windsor Street Exchange Project, uh, which will address concerns with access to Africville. So for those of you connected to the meeting via phone, please be aware that there will be a 40 to 60 second delay between what you hear on the phone and what you see on the webcast online. So we recommend that you follow the presentation slides that are linked on the website instead of connecting to the webcast if you're on the phone. So a little bit about me, I grew up in the north end of Halifax. I'm a proud member of the African Nova Scotian community. And as a non-practicing lawyer, I've worked with various community organizations, universities and legal groups to advocate for social justice and members of marginalized communities. And I'm very happy to lead us through this public meeting this afternoon. So before we begin, we'd like to make some acknowledgements. Uh, we would like to acknowledge that we are in Mi'kmaq, the ancestral and traditional lands of the Mi'kmaq people. HRM believes and acknowledges the peace and friendship treaties signed in this territory and recognizes that we are all treaty people. We would also like to affirm that we are in the decade for people of African descent. African Nova Scotians are a distinct founding people in our community who have been a key part of Nova Scotian culture and history. We acknowledge that African teaching, strengths, and pers perseverance continue to challenge and inspire our community. We would like to acknowledge those that helped us develop the plan to consult with the Africville community, especially considering the need for virtual engagement. The Africville Heritage Trust, the Africville Genealogy Society, and others from the community, as well as the African Nova Scotian Affairs Integration Office. So you're going to hear from a few different folks uh, and I'd like to introduce them. So first you'll hear from Megan Soroka, who is the project manager for the Winter Street Exchange Project. And as she's looking for feedback to identify potential community benefits as part of the project. Dave Espiseth is with Halifax Transit and is available to answer questions and listen to feedback about around transit service in Africville. Megan Backos is with the Active Transportation Planning Team and is available to answer questions and listen to feedback on active transportation connections to Africville. And Jonathan Goldson is with the Strategic Transportation Planning Team and will be moderating the submitted questions and comments. So this public meeting will begin with a brief overview of community benefits from Megan Soroka, uh, as well as this consultation process. We will then hear from members of the public, first from those on our speakers list, and then we will share the submitted questions and comments through the Q&A chat. Please note that all callers have been muted and you will need to unmute yourself by pressing star six when called upon. We hope the meeting goes smoothly tonight and we do not experience any technical challenges. However, in the event that you experience technical challenges, you will be able to view a recording of the meeting, which will be posted to the website after the live event. Please know that you do not have to provide your feedback to uh, at this meeting. Our online survey will remain open until November 30th and we are looking forward to hearing from you and we'll share details on how to provide more input at the end of the meeting. So first we will begin with a brief overview of community benefits and the consultation process from Megan Soroka.
Uh, my apologies for the delay. I was on mute. Uh, my name is Megan Soroka. I'm the project manager for the Windsor Street Exchange project. I'd like to share a bit about community benefits and give an overview of the consultation process. First of all, what are community benefits? Community benefits are a way to increase the social impact of a municipal project. They will vary depending on the scope of the project and consultation with the community. They could include community improvements through design, such as active transportation connections and infrastructure upgrades, social procurement and environmental improvements. Well, why are we considering them at this point? When approving the Windsor Street Exchange project, Regional Council directed the project team to explore whether community benefits could be a part of the final design of the Windsor Street Exchange and surrounding road network. How can they be incorporated into this project? Well, they may be incorporated into the design and they need to be identified early so they can be considered throughout the project. Some benefits may come in at later phases of the project, such as during the construction phase, but it's still important to identify them early so the implications and follow through on any identified community benefits can be carried out throughout the project. Next slide, please. Due to the proximity of the project to the historic Africville community, consultations will be held with the Africville community to identify opportunities associated with this project. As we are limited from meeting in person, we are holding a virtual engagement, including this public meeting. There is also a virtual information session on the Shape Your City page for the project. We hope that people will join us as they can and we'll share more details on how to provide feedback later in the public meeting. HRAM knows from earlier discussions with members of the Africville community that access to Africville Museum and Park is important. My colleagues from our active transportation and Halifax transit teams are also participating in this consultation process as we look for options to work together to improve access. The goal of the consultation is to build on what we've heard in the past and identify opportunities for both the Windsor Street Exchange Redevelopment Project and the Africville community. Some opportunities will be addressed through the Windsor Street Exchange Project while others may require the involvement of other HRM departments or government partners. Feedback gathered during this community consultation process will be documented in a report to HRM Council, which will be made publicly available. Next slide, please. Some examples of potential community benefits for the Windsor Street Exchange Project include community improvements incorporated into the design of the reconfigured transportation network, such as active transportation connections, like bike lanes, walking paths, and infrastructure upgrades. Other improvements related to the scope of the project, such as signs that share historical community history or directional signage, or employment opportunities through the social procurement framework recently adopted by HRM Council. The project team will explore employment opportunities through the recently adopted social procurement framework. During the development of the construction tender, the project team will consult with the community to, to determine what employment opportunities are within the scope of tender. This consultation is expected to be held in 2022. HRM Regional Council recently endorsed the Road to Economic Prosperity, the African Nova Scotian Economic Action Plan, which builds on the Halifax Partnership and HRM's existing work and facilitates greater dialogue within with the African Nova Scotian community, organizations, businesses, and all levels of government. The plan promotes open dialogue among all parties and addresses issues that fall within HRM's mandate or that HRM can influence. We want to hear from you if you have any opportunities for the Africville community that could be addressed or influenced by HRM. We may not be able to action these items through this process, but we can share these items with HRM Council for consideration for future projects or initiatives. Next slide, please. We have provided some examples of community benefits in our online survey and here on this slide, and we want to hear other ideas from the community. We also want to hear which options would be most important to you. Here are some examples to begin our conversation for this meeting. These are examples that could be included in the Windsor Street Exchange project scope, such as 
pedestrian access from Windsor Street Exchange to Africville, active transportation connections from Windsor Street Exchange to Africville, installation of bike facilities such as bike racks and repair stations, commemorative signage throughout Africville, wayfinding signage for Africville Museum and Park, and community signs welcoming to Africville. We're also looking for other ideas from the community. And as I noted, we are also open to hearing all ideas and opportunities for Africville from the community. Next slide, please. We will now hear from you to listen to your feedback and provide answers to any questions you may have. There are two ways in which members of the public can provide their feedback and ask questions. We have some folks connected via phone who signed up in advance of tonight's meeting to speak. And for those viewing the webcast online, you can post comments and questions to the Q&A chat on the right hand side of your screen. While we are trying to answer any questions or address any comments you may have during this meeting, there may be items that we cannot answer or address at this time. We will record all feedback and questions and post answers on the Shape Your City website. If you signed up to speak, we will call on you by name. A reminder that your line has been muted. To unmute, please press star six to confirm that we can hear you. And then we invite you to begin speaking. Please provide your name and community for the record. To allow time for everyone to share, please limit your, your time to five minutes. If you wish to submit a question or comment to our chat, click the icon shown on the screen and type it in and hit submit. Please note there is a checkbox to remove your name from the submission if you wish. The submissions do not appear in the chat immediately. They will appear as we proceed through the Q&A portion following the speakers. We kindly ask that everyone respect all points of view and opinion. We will do our best to respond to as many questions as possible tonight. But if we run out of time, please email Megan Soroka your questions and comments, and we will be providing a summary of the comments and responses to frequently asked questions after this meeting. And we will provide additional information on how to share feedback uh, at the end of this session. But if you are contacting Megan Soroka, you can do that at sorokam at halifax.ca. So now we will call upon the first person uh, who shared their name ahead of time to speak, and that is Irvin Carberry. So we don't so we don't currently see anyone in the queue to uh, share online, but if anybody wants to call in, you're welcome to do so. And the phone number for that is 902-901-6948. And the ID code that you will need to access this meeting is 447-916-296 followed by the pound sign. Again, the phone number to call into the meeting is 902-901-6948, and the meeting ID is 447-916-296, followed by the pound sign.
Good evening, everyone. Um, at this moment, we're going to move on to the Q&A portion of this meeting, um, starting with a question here that we received. Um, will the new Windsor Third Street Exchange use Offerville lands as part of the exchange? Um, and so I will direct that to Megan Soroka. Thanks, Jonathan, and thank you for your question. At this time, we're still early in the design process. Um, the uh, the stage we're at with the Windsor Street Exchange project is we are just hire at the process of hiring a consultant to begin the design process. Um, it's still early on, but we don't expect the uh, the portion of the of the anticipated construction area to go far outside of the current impacted area, uh, current right of way, um, but that is still to be determined. We'll be sharing our design plans uh, early in the new year. We'll be st beginning to reach out to stakeholders on the design process. Thank you, Megan. We have another question here, um, which asks, when will the city work with the actual people of Africa instead of the societies established who most feel have done a poor job representing them? I will again direct this to Megan Soroka. Thank you for your question. We're trying to reach out to all within the Africville community through this consultation process. Uh, while we appreciate uh, working with the groups um, that have provided some feedback on how we can reach people, and I do appreciate there have been some technical challenges with the this virtual engagement this evening. It is our hope and intention to reach all members of the Africville community through this process, and we're looking to receive feedback from everyone. Thank you again, Megan. Another question has come in and it asks, what is the reason for reaching out to the people of Africville on this project you mentioned as it is in close proximity? Could you expand on this? Thank you again for your question. Uh, we're reaching out to the Africville community as part of the process to identify potential community benefits. Uh, as the Windsor Street Exchange is very close to the historic Africville community. That is the reason we're reaching out to that community. Um, 
separately, we will be reaching out to the, uh, or the Mi'kmaq and urban Indigenous communities as well to discuss potential community benefits for that community as part of the project. And uh, that process will be coming up uh, in 2021. Does anyone else in who has joined the meeting have any questions? Any additional questions? And while we're watching for any questions to come in or any callers, um, if we can go to the next slide, I can share some other ways that you can provide feedback on this project. So if you have any questions or comments about what you've heard, you can submit them to the Q&A forum on shapeyourcityhalifax.ca slash Windsor Street Exchange Project. On the Shape Your City site, we have posted a virtual information session, which has information about the Windsor Street Exchange Project, community benefits in the consultation process, transit service in Africville, active transportation connections to Africville, the port project and how it, uh, it may impact the Africville community, uh, as well as an update on the uh, Macintosh Depot construction. We'll also, um, we'll, so any questions that you have about any of those can be submitted through the Q&A forum. Uh, we'll be posting questions with, or answers to those questions on a regular basis throughout the month of November. We also have an online survey open on the Shape Your City site until November 30th. There are alternative, alternative methods to completing the survey if you're not comfortable with the online portion. Um, please contact me. Uh, my email address is sorokam at halifax.ca if you have any questions or concerns. My email address and phone number are also on the Shape Your City site, and we're looking forward to hearing from you. As I've mentioned, we're trying to reach all members of the Africville community through this consultation process, and we're willing to connect with people in any way that they need to connect. At this time, we don't see any other questions coming in, but we do want to stay on the line until at least 630. We do want to thank everyone for the participation. So we will be um, we will be staying here uh, for at least five more minutes, watching for other questions or callers.
We have another question that had a comment, um, and it asks, why were the people of Africa forced into signing quit deeds to their properties only to have it expropriated afterwards? I will direct this again to Megan Soroka. Thanks for your question. I don't have an answer to that question, unfortunately, uh, but we are still happy to continue discussing community benefits as it relates to Windsor Street Exchange or other opportunities for the Africville community. We have another question, which I'll again direct to Megan Soroka, and it goes, is there going to be any new residential zoning occurring as part of this project? Thanks, that's a great question. What we're doing with this project is we're looking at existing land use and how it impacts transportation and traffic flow um, through all modes at, for this project. We won't be uh, at this time. We're not looking at developing new zoning or making changes to the zoning, um, but we will be looking at what is existing at this time, uh, including the center plan that has been developed and other land use master plans that have been developed for the area. As questions are still coming in, we'll wait another five minutes um, to hopefully see questions through.
Another question has come in. And asks, how is the criteria determined to establish exactly who the stakeholders are? Um, Megan, could you answer this one, please? Thanks, that's a great question. In, the, in this case, um, it's the stakeholders are anyone who is impacted by this project. Um, for a project that is impacting a major transportation uh, intersection or piece of our transportation network, uh, the stakeholders could be almost all of HRM. Um, anyone who travels through the area, anyone who um, you know is lives near the area, those are those are all stakeholders. Um, we'll be reaching out directly to people who live next to the project site, property owners who are living next to the Windsor Street Exchange when we're reaching out to people directly. However, we will be doing wide public engagement, looking to hear from all of the um, people who may be impacted by this project, um, which may be people who travel through this area or wish to travel through this area. And and as I mentioned earlier, that uh, that wider public engagement will be happening early in 2021. We've received another question, which asks, is there a budget specifically allotted towards Africa? Um, Megan, um, can you provide a response to you? Thanks, and that's a good question as well. Uh, at this time, there isn't a budget specifically allotted to um, towards community benefits. What we'll be doing is we'll be taking the feedback that we receive through the consultation process and we'll be kind of evaluating it, assessing what the cost would be of each item, um, what, what desires the community has, uh, and where the funding would come from, whether that's within the project scope, uh, whether that falls under a different HRM department, um, or whether that may be a different, uh, a different agency altogether. Um, with that information, we'll be preparing a report that will go to Regional Council and uh, that will outline any budget implications of community benefits and, and they'll be able to use that information to make final decisions on what would be included. Another question has come in asking, is this project designed as part of some sort of resolution for the African people in their struggle for recreation? In part. Um, Megan, um, could you answer this as well? Thanks for the question. Uh, this isn't designed uh, as part of uh, the, any request for reparations or in response to that. Uh, this is focused on identifying community benefits that could be part of this project. Uh, as I mentioned before, community benefits can be community improvements, employment opportunities, um, anything that gives a positive social impact for a project. And that's how we'll be looking at them.
We received another question, which I will again direct to Megan. So, and it asks, can we anticipate employment or training um, as African people? That's an excellent question. And I had mentioned employment opportunities. What we'll be doing as part of this project is we'll be using the newly adopted social procurement framework and um, we'll be using that to identify any employment opportunities as part of the construction tender process. Uh, we expect that will happen in 2022 when we're developing the construction tender and that will involve consultation with the community at that time. Another question has come in asking, as for the contracts of the work today, of the work to take place, would some be guaranteed to descendants of Africa? And if so, would tenders be open to the general public? So Megan, could you address this? Thanks, and that's asking similar to the, the last question, uh, looking around employment opportunities. So we will we will be looking at that through the social uh, social procurement framework and um, we'll be sharing more information about that as we get to the construction tender stage. Uh, as I mentioned, it will involve further consultation with the community to identify which opportunities um, are fit best for this project. Thank you. Another question has come in asking, are the proposed Africa AT connections part of the exchange or something separate? Um, Megan, Soroka, would you like to take this one on first? Thank you, and I'll, I'll ask Megan Backus to jump in after this. I'll just say we're looking at um, AT connections as part of the Windsor Street Exchange project. But there's also a separate initiative that has been ongoing and, and we're trying to coordinate and connect with to improve access to Africville. And that's the project that our active transportation planning group is working on. Uh, and Megan Backus is the project manager for that. So maybe you can share a little bit about, about that, Megan. Sure, and um, I apologize if my video might be lagging a bit. It looks like it is on my end, but um, yeah, I'm currently managing a project to create some active transportation connections. So that could be sidewalks, um, multi-use pathways or bike lanes, whatever, um, whatever is feasible um, and um, and matches kind of some of the feedback that we receive from the community and our stakeholders. So this project started um, back in late 2018. And um, when we had some initial discussions, we heard that the community, when the, when we came out with active transportation consultation, the community wanted to um, take a bit of a, a broader approach to access um, to Africville, which would include um, different modes of transportation. Um, so, you know, the active transportation, the walking and was very important to the community, but also transit and some other um, access points as well. So this is, um, we, we took a bit of a step back at that point and are coming back now with a bit of a broader approach coordinating with the Windsor Street Exchange so that both our projects can be coordinated as far as a potential connection from Africville through the Windsor Street Exchange um, and also that we, so that we can come out to the community with um, which is a more holistic uh, vantage point right now. So we're looking for some feedback as part of the Windsor Street Exchange um, online survey as well. There's a few questions specific to active transportation. Um, there's also a few very high level proposed connections that, um, that we're considering. Um, by no means are those set in stone. We just want to hear some of the feedback of different connections that um, the community would like us to further look into. And there will be separate active transportation 
public engagement happening in uh, 2021. So as of right now, this is just a bit of pre-engagement for the active transportation project so that we can get a feel for um, what information the community wants for public engagement in the new year. Thank you for your response, uh, Megan Bacos. Um, we received a, another question um, asking, do you require the Africville community's consent for this exchange project? And I will direct this to Megan Soroka. Thank you for your question. As a major transportation project, the um, the consent for, or the approval for this project is through at HRM Regional Council. Um, as part of the approval of this project, it, we applied for funding through the National Trade Corridors Fund, which is a fund that's run under Transport Canada. Um, that funding was approved and um, we're proceeding with the project. So as I mentioned earlier, we're er very early in the design and planning phase, um, but we're beginning to kick that off and we'll be reaching out broader to gather input on the on the project. Another question coming in has asked uh, can we feel confident that participants herein will be advised of ensuing meetings by inclusion to ensure continued advisement moving forward? Um, Megan, could you answer this one for us, please? Yes, thank you for your question. And we appreciate your patience as we try to switch to a virtual engagement platform. Um, it is a challenge as we are um, I think all uh, all of impacted by public health restrictions. Um, of course, typically we would come to you and and hear from you directly, um, but in this case we are restricted. So we are continuing with a virtual engagement at this time. Um, however, as I noted, I've shared my email and phone number. I do want to hear from everyone directly. Um, we will be attempting to connect with you and advertise as we have been. Um, I know it is difficult to meet with people or to connect with people at this time as focus is elsewhere. Um, we will, if you do want to be kept up to date on future Africville consultation, um, if you'd like to provide me with your email address, I have begun a, um, a contact list uh, to connect with people directly, and that contact list would be used for this project and any future consultation on the projects that we've discussed, um, and any future consultation that might, uh, might want to reach out to the Africville community. So we're looking to, um, I, I'm looking to collect that information if, if you would like to be informed. Thank you, Megan. Um, in addition to that question, I'll also ask you to address this one, which asks, is this project limited to transportation solely from an Africville perspective? This project is um, a broader project uh, because it is part of the, um, it's, an, it's a major part of our transportation network. Um, so while this first piece, um, we are reaching out directly to the Africville community to identify community benefits. Um, and I have focused on potential community benefits from a transportation perspective because those are the items that I know would be within our project scope. Um, there, as I mentioned, we are hearing, um, we are listening for other opportunities that may come up. 
um, and the project overall is uh, is focused on transportation, move, the movement of vehicles and goods through the Windsor Street Exchange. Um, we're looking to add active transportation connections through the Windsor Street Exchange. We're looking to add transit priority measures through the Windsor Street Exchange. And most importantly, we're looking to improve the road, the safe road safety for all road users uh, in this area. So there, this is a, a broad transportation project. We've received a lot of questions which ask, can we include more descendants than the Heritage Trust who have made it clear that they don't accept or represent all people of Africa? Thanks for your question. And as I noted earlier, we are trying to connect with all members of the Africville community. Um, please feel free to reach out to me directly if you would like to provide feedback or answer our online surveys. And um, we have connected with a few groups just uh, because we needed some feedback on how to best connect with the community as we're working through vir virtual engagement. As I've noted, we've had some challenges um, as, as we go through this, but we're, I will, I'm accepting feedback from all members of the Africa community. Hello again, and, and this is um, Megan here. I'm What I'm going to do is I'll type my email and phone number into the chat box. So if anyone would like to connect with me directly, uh, they can. And as I mentioned, we really appreciate your patience as we work through the technical challenges of connecting virtually. Hi everyone, this is Jelana Lewis. Thank you for everyone who has asked questions in the chat. I just want to remind folks as we're winding down, getting close to seven o'clock, which was our scheduled end time, that you can also phone in if you'd like. And the number to do that is 902-901-6948. 
And the meeting ID is 447-916-296, followed by the pound or hashtag sign. Again, the phone number to call in if you'd like to voice uh, your question is 902-901-6948. And the meeting ID is 447-916-296, pound or hashtag sign. Another question has come in asking, how much will the four new cranes cost? Um, and Megan Soroka, I will again direct this to you. Thanks for your question. I believe that's related to the um, the port project, the port of Halifax and their upcoming projects. Um, we don't have anyone with us on today's public meeting um, around the port or from the port. Uh, but they had shared some information as part of the virtual information session around their future planning, and they are collecting feedback on upcoming projects. Um, the address for that is on our Shape Your City site, and I'll also share it right now, and I'll share it in the chat. The address is portofhalifax.ca slash policies dash and dash planning, and I will share that in the chat. Well, now that we're at seven o'clock, we'll wrap things up for this evening. I do want to thank everyone for their participation, and I also want to thank you for your patience as we work through the virtual engagement. We really want to connect with everyone in the Africville community, but we recognize there are some challenges with the um, with doing things virtually. Again, you can email me directly or call if you have any questions or comments. We are also um, holding another virtu uh, virtual public meeting tomorrow, uh, Friday, November 13th at, uh, at tw 12 noon, and that's between 12 and 1. Um, the information for that uh, is in the same PDF uh, instructions that were for this evening's meeting. If you would like to speak at tomorrow's meeting, uh, please feel free to email me if I have your name before we have the meeting at noon, then I will be 
will be sure to call upon you um, to share your point of view. And I see that one last question has come in. Uh, where will the new train rails be located which plan to connect both piers? Again, that is um, a question related to the Port of Halifax's project. And um, you can go to the website there. Um, there was some information shared through the virtual information session, um, but you can provide feedback directly to the Port of Halifax um, on their project. Again, thank you all for your participation. We will be sharing this uh, video on, our, on the Shape Your City site, and we invite you to visit our Shape Your City webpage to ask questions in the online forum, which we'll provide answers to or to answer our online survey. And again, you can contact me directly if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you again.